Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video, we saw that pulsars actually slow down. The amount of energy they emit, which is absolutely enormous, like in the Crab Nebula, the energy emitted by that pulsar is 100,000 times the energy emitted by the Sun every single second, which causes the pulsar to slow down. But is it possible for pulsars to spin up? And the answer is yes, they can spin up in a situation where they can acquire uh, material from a nearby object, such as perhaps a binary red giant companion. So let's say there's two stars, one already went through its supernova stage and now it's a neutron star, it's rotating very rapidly on its axis, and there's a companion star that now has become a red giant. A red giant swells up to tremendous size and the outer layers may be close enough to the, to the pulsar, the neutron star, to pull off some material off the star. Depending upon the direction of the magnetic field, the spin and so forth, if the material comes in the same direction and adds on to the pulsar in the same direction as the spin of the pulsar, then it's an additive process and it can actually cause the pulsar to spin up and start spinning faster and faster. So, if the initial kinetic energy is one half I omega squared and the initial angular momentum is equal to the moment of inertia times the angular speed of the pulsar, then how much would the added material add to that angular momentum? Well, the added angular momentum would also be I times omega, and the moment of inertia of the material that is deposited onto the surface, and let's say that an amount of material M is deposited onto the surface at a distance R away from the center of the neutron star, which of course is the radius of the neutron star, we can then say we multiply the mass times the radius squared, that's the angle of momentum of the material that's deposited every single second, and we multiply that times V over R, and of course one of the R's cancel out with one of these R's, so essentially we multiply the mass times the velocity times the radius, and that's the added, added angle of momentum onto the, onto the neutron star. And so if we then take the original angle momentum and then we add the deposited angle momentum, MVR, the material that goes on there, you can see that slowly the pulsar will begin to spin faster and faster and faster. So even though it's emitting energy and slowing down from the energy that's emitted, it will pick up speed because of the deposited material causes it to go faster. It's kind of like taking a bicycle and turning it upside down so the wheels are sticking up. And then you take your hand and you pull it along the tire along the wheel or the tire of the bicycle, the bicycle wheel will go faster and faster and faster and it's that same process that's kind of causing the, the pulsar to speed up faster and faster and faster. And so we have the fastest known pulsar right now is a pulsar that spins 712 times per second. So that's the fastest pulsar that we've seen to date and it's very likely that the reason why this pulsar has reached those kind of rotational speeds because of potential add-on material that made it go faster and faster. So this is the process by which we get what we call the millisecond type of pulsars that speed up because of the deposited material cause it to go faster if it's deposited in the same direction as the rotation of the pulsar. So it is possible and we do see events such as these that we can observe and that is how it happens. No, it's not like pushing a swing. As long as it lands in the right direction with the magnetic field in the right direction so that it's additive instead of subtractive, then it's just going to spin it up more and more. There's also no periodicity to it. But what if it, at its, the velocity is slower than 700 times per second? So if the, it doesn't matter. Even if it's slower than the already fast rotational speed, doesn't matter. As long as it's in the same direction, it'll keep adding it and adds energy to it. It will do something.